Welcome everyone to another episode of Bridgewater Briefs. I'm your host, John Norris. The 2018 elections are upcoming soon. Not only will the people of Massachusetts be deciding on who they want in which office, but Massachusetts will be making some important decisions, three to be exact. When you go to vote for your choice of office, you will also have three ballot measures to vote on as well. In the past, there has been plenty of confusion as to what a yes vote would mean on some issues and what a no vote would mean. In order to help prevent confusion, I'm going to go over the facts of each of the ballot questions. After reviewing each of the ballot uh, questions, I'll go include my opinion, my take on what each one would mean. Ballot question number one is a question of whether we the people should force hospitals to staff nurses at a certain level based on their role. This ballot measure would establish patient assignment limits for registered nurses working in hospitals. Limits would be determined by the type of medical unit or patient with whom a nurse is working, and the maximum number of patients assigned determined by the limits would apply at all times. For example, it sets standards such as a maximum of two patients for nurses caring for urgent, non-stable patients, five, uh, five patients maximum for nurses in rehabilitation units, and six maximum patients for nurses caring for uncomplicated mothers or babies postpartum. Also, the proposed law would require a hospital to comply with these restrictions without reducing its level of nursing, services, maintenance, clerical, professional, or other staff. Any hospital found in violations of these would require the nurses, uh, the required nurse levels would receive a civil penalty of up to $25,000 per violation per day that a violation continues. Also, the bill requires a facility to post a notice of this law with a civil penalty of $250 to $2,500 each day for non-compliance. This would go into effect on the 1st of January, 2019. <clears throat> Those are the facts. So a vote of yes means you want to create this new standard. A vote of no means that everything stays the same. Here's my opinion. This bill has a lot of problems. This bill believes that a nurse is a nurse is a nurse. This is false. Each nurse is not the same. Some can take on more people, some can take on less. Each hospital hires and evaluates people based upon their performances. Because of that, hospitals should be able to determine what the workload for the nurses are. More than uh, limits on how, this also limits how a hospital operates. It limits how they also adjust it and deal with their budgets in this law. How would the government know if its staff was laid off because of, law, uh, because of the law or because of the normal course of businesses? Because it prevents businesses from taking steps to be financially secure, it's gonna cause a problem for the, the hospitals themselves. If they can't lay people off after one Jan uh, January and there's an economic crash, they're going to run into problems with these violations. The next problem is that these penalties are a little absurd. If they're found in violation and they cannot reduce their services as stated by the law, they get a $25,000 a day in perpetuity fine until they find another nurse. This means that hospitals will have from the time this law passes until New Year's to reduce services or hire more nurses before they start getting fined. If it takes three months from that time, then they have to identify they need a nurse to the time that they hire a nurse, they receive a fine of $2,250,000. And hiring takes time. Also, there's no provision in this for emergencies or overcrowding. Remember the marathon bombing? The heroin epidemic? Heck, the annual flu outbreak? When an event happens and at a hospital, they receive an influx of people that are going to be turned away. Are they going to turn them away or are they going to accept the $25,000 liability? A nurse cannot take on more than four urgent but stable care patients. So if they have six nurses, they can have a 24 patients maximum. What if another person walks in? If they have something more pressing than the 24 that are already there? Now you are forcing the hospitals to choose between accepting a patient to provide care and a hefty fine. Either hospitals will start to push people away to other hospitals, or they'll have to raise their costs and attempt to get more nurses to meet these requirements. So our health care costs are going to increase even more. Safety is a question of liability. This whole thing is founded upon liability. The hospital already has the liability. If a hospital is found being neglectful of their patients, they're liable. If a hospital is found to have unsafe practices with regards to the number of patients to nurses, they're liable. Because of this, I'll be voting against this bill, and I encourage you to do the same. Ballot question number two. This is an initiative to create an advisory commission for amendments to the U.S. Constitution regarding corporate personhood and political spending, specifically trying to overturn Citizens United versus FEC and defining, defining inalienable constitutional rights as belonging to individual living human beings, not corporations, or collections of humans. 
Any resident of Massachusetts could apply to serve as the 15 person commission. Commissions would not be paid. The commission would, be, would create reports of the following. Political and election spending in Massachusetts, the legal ability of the state or government to regulate corporations, and proposals for federal constitutional amendments and actions recommended for advancing the proposed amendments. This measurement would take effect on January 1, 2019, and the commissioner's first report would be due December 31st, 2019. If you vote yes, you're voting to create the commission. If you vote no, then you're going to leave things as they are. Those are the facts. Here are my thoughts. This is politically confusing. By creating a citizen's commission, it gives the appearance that the state is accepting the ideas of this group, specifically anti-capitalism and anti-corporations. This is not necessarily true for the state. Also, there's no need. They can just do it themselves. If they have an amendment, they can work through Congress to get these ideas passed. The people doing this are looking for legitimacy granted as having the state stand up this commission. The process for ideas of these people to become constitutionally sound although not logically sound, exists. The ideas they're putting forward are also ridiculous. Corporate personhood is poorly understood and overstated. Corporate personhood is the legal idea that a corporation has some of the same rights and responsibilities that a natural person like you and I enjoy. This group seems to want to do away with corporate personhood through constitutional amendments, but what they do not seem to understand is this includes corporations' abilities to enter contracts, to sue or be sued in court, or an ease of taxation through a single entity. Without corporate personhood, business would not function as they do now. To strip away corporate personhood, which is still as of yet not fully defined, would cause our economy to come to a screeching halt. You, you see, corporations are there so people can organize and associate, but it also affords people protections who wish to enter the market. Without these protections, the corporate personhood, the risk would go up dramatically and de-incentivize opening up a business. Citizens United, a direct target of this bill, allows for corporations to support whomever they want, politically speaking, but is also upheld that the requirements for political disclosure by sponsors of advertisements. In other words, if you take out an advertisement for a specific individual or a cause, you have to disclose that. Eliminating this law would not eliminate money from politics. I am of the impression you could not in any way take money out of the elections without stifling the people's First Amendment rights. If someone wishes to express themselves politically through advertisement, then that's their right. To take that away is censorship and reprehensible. If you want to create this commission, you should vote yes on this bill. I recommend voting no on this bill, and instead, let the people have their way of going up through the constitutional amendments the way it was already intended by the Founding Fathers. Question three. And honestly, one of the prime reasons why I'm doing this. This question is going to be confusing and will cause a lot of issues. The exact language is, quote, do you approve of a law summarized below, which has been approved by the House of Representatives by a vote of 117 to 36 on July 7, 2016, and approved by Senate by the Senate by a voice vote on July 7, 2016, close quotes. If you vote yes, then you are voting to uphold the current law, which was SB 2407, which means if you are against it, you want to vote no. A little background on what this is. Massachusetts is one of 19 states, along with Washington, D.C., that have implemented anti-discrimination laws regarding gender identity as of January 2018. Mass passed a law in 2016 that prohibited discrimination based on gender identity in public businesses or in other places open to the general public, such as hotels, stores, restaurants, theaters, sports stadiums, and hospitals. The penalty for each violation of this law prohibited against discrimination in public places, including discrimination based on gender identity under SB 2407, was set up to be A, up to $100, B, up to three, uh, 30 days in prison, or C, both. These are the facts. Here's my opinion. This is a complex and difficult question. So let's start with the basics. People, trans people, people of different gender identities are exactly that, people. It is too easy to demonize people who behave in a way that is contradictory to what we consider normal. So I say the following argument with full respect to the people who have gender dysphoria or identify themselves as something other than male or female. We're all Americans and we're all people. I'm against forcing businesses to accept a point of view. If a business wants to accommodate a particular point of view, why can't we force them to accommodate all points of view? 
all religions, all ethnic customs. Instead, we should let businesses run and let the market handle the ones who do not operate in the way you agree with. As Milton Friedman, a famous economist, once said, vote with your feet. The next thing is this bill creates a problem as we cannot prove a state of mind. SB 2407 would allow people who would normally take advantage of people and gives them a tool to do such. I want to make an important distinction here. I'm, I'm not talking about trans people or people who are not traditionally straight or, or gay or whatever. I'm talking about people who have criminal intent to do harm, who would use this ability to harm others. It does not take a lot of imagination to see how this is true. And if just one person is harmed by this, then no level of accommodation is worth it. I fully understand people wanting to keep this law around, but I'm against it. This bill measure, like others, requires a lot of thought before making a decision. Take the time to learn about these three ballot measures and form opinions before you go to the polls this year. The only way to make our republic better is through an educated and informed electorate. That's you. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.